Hello everybody and welcome back to another Horizon 4 video here on my channel. So in today's video guys we are going to be discussing the trailer for Horizon 4 which is scheduled to come out later tonight and a huge wish list we have made as a community for this trailer and uh, what we can be expecting uh, when it does release. But before we jump into today's massive video guys, if you are new around here and don't know what we are doing, this is the Forza Horizon 4 information show, and what we do on the show guys is we discuss Horizon 4 to the absolute max, up to its release later this year. If you do go on to enjoy today's video guys, please slap that like button as hard as you can, and subscribe so you never miss any future uh, Horizon 4 informational videos here on the channel. If you do wish to go the step further, then you can click the notification bell to be notified when a new Horizon 4 video goes live, which I would very much recommend doing. Doing, um, especially tonight because the Horizon 4 trailer is coming and it will be uploaded here as soon as possible so be the first to view that and be on the lookout for it later tonight so let's get into today's video now uh, we'll be sharing the top featured improvements that we have either uh, read on uh, reddit over on the Forza forum site and uh, over on the YouTube comments and uh, this is just everything that we'd like to come to the game for uh, that we'd actually like to see um, some aspect of in the trailer uh, I'll talk a bit about um, turn 10 and playground games and then cards and customization, improvements to the career storyline, free roam map, and much more. Let's begin, shall we? Okay. So, first of all, the map. So, we have to begin with the map. With every Horizon game, the die hard Forza fans put on their theorist caps and begin coming up with places that the next Horizon Festival could move to. We've seen the Horizon Festival locate in places like Colorado, Southern Europe, and even Australia. So, where's next? Well, the majority of the Forza community believes it will be Japan. However, there's no solid proof solid proof to back this up of yet. Don't get me wrong, obviously, Japan would be an awesome location for the next Horizon game, but Playground Games could build an immersive open world map like no other elsewhere. My interpretation, interpretation, interpretation hey, of Japan uh, is two things. The vibrant, colourful city of Tokyo and the twisty, dangerous mountain roads of Mount Fuji. Having both Tokyo and a mountain... Um, with bendy, tight roads on the same map would take for a very unique experience like no other. The developers could easily implement a much longer airstrip if they, if they decided to settle with Japan, and it's something we've obviously all been asking for. We want an airstrip that will let us max out the speedometer on our cars before having to slam on the brakes to avoid an indestructible wall or jump at the end. Obviously I'm not done with Japan yet. We've all seen Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift. If you haven't, get off this video and shame on you. Don't come back. Anyway, um, <laughs> we all remember that the iconic race between the Drift, uh, Drift King and Sean. So, the one where DK absolutely destroys Sean in a, in a uh, drifting competition that is set in a parking structure. Well, sh uh, something a large majority of Forza players want to see is a multi-story car park like the one in the film. Imagine hosting car meets with your friends on top of a large multi-story car park and then down uh, on the other side. You can either drift your way down to the bottom or just use a conveniently placed ramp to jump your way down. It's something I would personally like to see even if the game isn't set in Japan. So what about other possible destinations? Uh, well, there's a few places that would suit the Horizon Festival uh, perfectly. I'd like to see the Horizon Festival return to Europe, but this time in a different country. German, uh, Germany, to be exact. So Germany has beautiful buildings, historic landmarks, uh, beautiful views, gigantic forests, amazing roads, and so on. Imagine racing at full speed down the Autobahn in Germany one minute, and then cruising through Berlin the next, and by sundown you're off-roading in the wild forests that the country has to offer. It would be a very nice uh, preference when it comes to picking a map. Another little idea before we move on to the next uh, topic, which is campaign. Um, we all love uh, Jeremy Clarkson and his gang with the old Top Gear days and now the Grand Tour days, especially when they travel to exotic locations for the series finale. Why not move the next Horizon Festival to Africa? I mean, we've already had the experience what the Outback has to offer, so why not visit the exotic terrain of Africa? We have the cars necessary to tackle the terrain. The scenic views and terrifying roads on the edges of cliffs would be amazing to drive on. Picture driving through the Sahara Desert with your friends in hypercars with the sun blazing in the distance. Africa would be ideal in the uh, opinion of everyone else, but the off-roading would be so much fun, and it would without a doubt be very unique to the scene. And obviously there's big cities in Africa too, it's not all desert and forest. The weather would also be unpredictable and very violent, thunderstorms, lightning storms and extreme heat waves would affect the cars and provide a beautiful landscape. 
So the campaign. Uh, no game in the Horizon series has ever been praised for having a particularly amazing story mode. They all tend to tell the same story. A new driver shows up at the festival, works his way up the ranks to become the Horizon Champion. Of course, Horizon 3 was a little different as you started the game as the Horizon Champion and had to build your outpost to meet the demand of an ever-growing audience. Which is a good um, transition from the last one, but what can they do next to improve? Well, first of all, don't just hand us the keys to the Horizon Festival and put us in charge straight away. People like to start with nothing and work their way up, similar to what we had to do in the first two games in the series. Um, if the game is set in Japan, think about how cool it would be if you started as this teenager who, who has a huge aspiration to become the Horizon Champion. Once the festival makes its way to his country, all that time and effort he put into building his Nissan 180SX in his parents' garage pays off and he qualifies for the Horizon series. Now that's the kind of story that you'd like to see and follow. So I really enjoyed the way the first Horizon game started off. You began the game in a Volkswagen Corrado um, and had to work your way up there too. Uh, so please give us a story that's both interesting and longer than the previous ones. Now the cars. Now this section could be paragraphs long and it could be, uh, oh it could take me about an hour to read but I'll try and keep it short. So the cars being added to the Forza games each month thanks to the car packs, uh, that's where we see all the interesting cars make their way into the franchise. So like previous games we should be seeing a large amount of the DLC cars that were introduced in Her uh, Forza Motorsport 7 make their way into Horizon 4, excluding the race cars of course. We can expect to see cars like the Chiron, uh, the Alfa Romeo Aguilia Quadrifiogo, um, I butchered that name so I do apologise, <laughs> the Abarth 124 Spider, the Kia Stinger and many more in the next Horizon game. As for vehicles that haven't joined us through DLC yet, there's quite a few that I'd like to see join the car list. Some of these include the lesser known brands such as Seat, Suzuki and Skoda, but these brands have a lot of vehicles to offer and produce some exciting and nippy small cars. So here are a few um, newer cars that we want to see come to Horizon 4. Uh, the new Volkswagen Polo GTI, the new Ford Fiesta ST, the Renault Twingo GT, the Smart 42 Brabus Edition, the new Ford Focus RS, the new Ford Focus ST, the new Volkswagen Golf GTI, Audi RS3, uh, Jaguar I-Pace, uh, the Tesla Model X, the new Audi Q7, uh, SQ7, sorry, uh, the Lincoln Navigator, McLaren 720S, McLaren Senna, the uh, Huracan Performante, the new Aston Martin V8 Vantage, the new Audi RS5, the Chevy Silverado, the Ford Explorer, the Range Rover Velar, the Alfa Romeo Stelvio, the Volvo XC60, the Volkswagen Amarok, the Mercedes X-Glass, the new BMW X5, the Maserati Quattroporte, the new Audi A8, the new Audi Q8, and the Aston Martin Rapide. So that's quite a few cards, but remember there, there are just some of the new vehicles we want to see come to the Horizon series. There's hundreds of older cars that we would drive, uh, that we'd like to drive in the next game. Some of these include Eastern European cars like um, Ladas and Trabants, more estate cars similar to the Mercedes-Benz E63 AMG Estate and the Audi RS6 and so much more fun cars to go. There's also uh, a trend being noticed where all interesting and unique vehicles show up in the motorsport series through DLC and ending up not joining the Horizon series. I'm looking at you, the limo. We're all patiently waiting for the recently announced Honda Odyssey minivan and the iconic Mercedes racing truck to be added to the Horizon game. The amount of mini games we could play with our friends would be incredible, so let's hope Turn 10 and Playground Games decide to come to their senses and add these exciting vehicles in the next Horizon game. So customization. So when playing an e-racing game, players like to make their cars unique. They do this by customizing their cars. This can be done by either painting, adding decals, changing bumpers, equipping different rims, and so on. Horizon 3 was a huge step up for customization as we saw the introduction of full body kits and some very unique modifications. Horizon 4 has some brilliantly uh, has a brilliant opportunity here to introduce some new features and customization if the rumors are true. And we're racing in Japan. Some of the Biggest requests um, so far seem to be the addition of the neons or underglows. Having neons would look particularly cool when driving around at night, however in day it would be very useless. Hopefully if they do end up implementing neons into the game they give us access to a quick menu while free roaming to turn them on or off. That's not all though. As you know, when buying a car in real life you have many different trims of cars or different specs. These different specs usually look different because they have special rims. So I was thinking, why not give us these rims to choose from when buying or customising the car? Some examples of the games do this perfectly, that are Test Driver Limited 2 and CSR Racing 2 for mobile. Both of these games let you pick different styled rims from the manufacturer when buying a car, and I believe it would be a great addition to the Horizon series as many cars like the Lamborghini Huracan and the Audi R8 feature many different types of rims. 
something else fans have been asking for is uh, xenon lights or any car for that matter uh, uh, having the ability to tailor your headlights to any color you want would be a brilliant way to stand out from the crowd and make your car unique other things we would like to see include customizable brake calipers uh, custom exhaust pipes and front and rear fenders and finally decals what love um we love what Forza Horizon 3 let us, do, let us do with our cars. The paint mode let us create the most intricate designs with the press of a few buttons. Everything was great, it was just missing one little thing, giving us the ability to apply decals on our windows. Look at those most iconic cars for Need for Speed and Fast and Furious. They all have branding or stickers on the windows. It's something that Need for Speed implemented and we've all been loving it. The Need for Speed community has come out with some incredible designs like the recreations of characters from the Cars films and real world tuners. Let's hope Turn 10 listens and adds this into the game. Next is Free Roam. So we all love the Horizon games for their large open world maps. We shared where we'd like to see the game set, but what about the map of the settings and things we can do in it? We talked about adding a larger airstrip, livelier cities, and possibly a multi-story car park. Now all of that is great and we would love to see all those things, but wherever the next Horizon Festival is set, we want to see the return of danger signs and drift zones. These left us with something to do when driving around the map and exploring its many secrets. Speaking of secrets, why not include some easter eggs for players to discover while free roaming? We found a few secrets located in the map in Horizon 3, like the covers of previous Forza titles on a magazine rack in the window of the newsagents. Small things like this make it fun to explore and enjoy the little things that the map has to offer. Now this is something we've all been asking for since the first Horizon game. I'm talking of course about convertibles and having the ability to put the roof down in free roam. Is that too much to ask for? I feel like I'm actually behind the wheel of a car when I'm playing Forza, so being able to take the roof down would be really cool. You all remember being able to do this in Test Drive Unlimited, yeah? And how cool was it to pull up to a set of traffic lights and then take the roof down on your Ferrari California before putting your foot down and then when, it uh, when the lights turn green? Well, let's all pray we could do this in Horizon 4. Along with this, I like to have the ability to turn the car off, turn the engine off, turn the lights off when in free roam. It's the little things like this that make the game unique and feel a tad more realistic. Something really cool that we would like to see is Forza Vista in any location. Sounds cool, right? Imagine pulling up to a gas station and walking around your car and popping the hood. If that isn't immersion, then we don't really know what is. So music. Now the music used in all previous iterations of the Horizon series have been iconic. The upbeat and exciting music that was used in Horizon 1 has stuck with me to this day. Each Horizon game has very unique songs that make the game memorable. We should expect to see the return of Horizon Base Arena, Horizon Pulse and Horizon Block Party. One station that I found um, uh, quite a lot of people found themselves uh, listening to in Horizon 3 was Future Classic. It featured some great artists such as Flume and Flight Facilities and much more. To see the return of the station would put a huge smile on those guys' faces. But with Spotify only growing in popularity, the radio stations are beginning to die out. Many of my friends, myself included, play mu music through Spotify when playing games like Forza. This means the next Horizon title will need some pretty memorable and groundbreaking music, like Horizon 3 did a great job when it came to soundtrack, including in modern and fresh songs like Rinse and Repeat, uh, Runaway, Ashes of Love and much more. So let's also not forget Ingrid is a Hybrid, which plays every time you load up the game. A very nice loading up song, if I do say so myself. Overall, the soundtrack for all previous Horizon titles have been solid, and have introduced us to many songs and artists that we may have not heard about before. So let's hope they do keep this up and introduce some very nice things in the future. Now, guys, the last thing... Um there was a lot of small things that popped up while putting together a wish list uh, for the community from the next Horizon game. I asked around and uh, spoke to people in the uh, Forza Reddit and um, just for some like fan feedback to get a general idea of what people wanted to see in Horizon 4. So here are just a few of the things uh, that I've been told. Um, we've got greater elevation changes, steeper hills, ramps and slopes. Headlight controls, for example high beams or low beams. Wiper controls, so giving the player the choice to either turn on or off the wipers when they feel like it. Having the ability to test drive a car before purchasing it, or being able to walk around the vehicle to look around and inside it before making a final purchase. Custom races with a race editor, also point to point races. Give it a start line, and the first to the finish line wins, no checkpoints. Mini games such as car football, hide and seek, or delivery challenges. Favourites menu to easily mark your favourite and most used vehicles or races. An icon to indicate whether a vehicle in your garage is stock or modified. Optional fuel wear mode. The return of the shopping cart to speed up customization. An improved drone mode that can fly faster and higher than the previous game and doesn't have any sway. Rewards for completing certain free roam events, for example finishing all the bucket list challenges should reward you with a rare car that cannot be purchased. Um, 
Loot boxes or no loot boxes? The community are very divided on this subject. Firstly, I am for no loot boxes at all. Ability to dis disable traffic, driver tiles or the challenge player notification from appearing while free roaming. And a wider selection of avatars to choose from or even a customizable character that you can modify yourself. So that's the community wish list for the trailer for Horizon 4. Now stay tuned guys, the Horizon 4 trailer I believe is coming later on tonight. I could be mistaken, I could not be. However, I'm very much excited to uh, uh, be very much excited to think about what Microsoft and Turn 10 and Playground Games could reveal later tonight. Let me know down there in the comments um, section below guys. Do you think the trailer will be released today? And uh, what kind of things you want to see in this trailer? Let's hope all these features that I've just got over today uh, can be implemented some way in the trailer so we get a good idea of what we're doing. Like I said guys, stay tuned because the trailer is coming soon and a load of videos are coming straight after that. So please be aware, you might be spammed on your sub boxes, but it'll be for a very good cause. But that's it for me in today's video guys and I did hope you enjoy it. If you did, please like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you over in my next video guys. So I'd like to thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye bye.